Hello and welcome. My name is Nilaus and this is a tutorial, mod tutorial for Advanced Autonomous Industries. This is an absolutely spectacular mod pack that allows unprecedented automation in the game. However, with anything that adds some really cool new features, it is not simple. It's a, one of the more advanced, if not the most advanced uh, mod that I have, uh, I have worked with. But it's so rewarding when you get there. So I'm going to use it for my Season 8 and... Therefore, I thought it would be a great idea for me to show what it can do so that uh, inspire everyone else to play with this mod as well. So let's get started. I will have several uh, several different tutorials for this series and because it, it is so complicated. But we're going to start with the first one. As you can see here, this is an overview of the, uh, of the vehicles that are available. Let's just start them from one end to the other. We have a miner, marks one to mark five. We just look at the mining speed. We can see them up here. They're not gated behind any research. You could say the later ones should be gated, gated behind research. However, you can see here the mining speed is between 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So what does that mean? Well, let's uh, grab this one and place it on a minefield. And then what you will see happening is that it runs out of power, of course. Let's look. It just slowly uh, harvests sapphire ore. Brilliant, you'd say. Now, what I can do with this is I can actually let's place something here, there, and well, we can put it into a belt, for example. And that's an early way solution to a miner. You don't need any any burner miners. You can just take the first one because you start with one mining vehicle MK1, and it's actually quite efficient. So that's one use of it. What you can also see is, is, let's compare it to the difference between this one. This is a Mark V is the late game version. And this one can actually take four. And look at the speed it's uh, it's happening with. This is just crazy. But it's, yeah, it is the, the very latest tech. So that's uh, an alternative to the miner. What it can do, that's uh, just placing it. However, it is a vehicle. So let's, uh, let's also show that. It can also have its trees, as you can see here. When I get in, I can drive it. If the autosave will stop. There we go. Thank you. And I'll drive it. It's an extremely efficient way of clearing forest in the early game. You just get in, clear a path through the forest, and you have and it's so kind that it'll actually put the trees in your inventory and you can use them from there. It'll also put them into uh so very, very efficient way of clearing trees in the early game. Anyway. I'm not going to do that anymore. So that's the uh, that's the miners. So they work on minefields and they work on uh, on forest. But it'll just get stuck there if you don't do anything. The next one is the hauler. I like this one. Well, I do like the all of them. This has a nice speed. It's basically just a big inventory. And then you go. 120 units here. Now this does have some magic to it. This is part of advanced autonomous industries. Let's. Look at it, empty inventory. I go up here near the miners. Let's have a look at what happens. Whoops, inventory, inventory transferred. And everything that was in here, you can see here, it just, every second or so, it just pushes things in here. There you go, very easy way of filling up a truck. The truck will then move out and you can take it somewhere else. So this one has already, uh, it doesn't even say, but it does have a lot of content already. So that's the logistics side. You have the miners of varying quality during the game. I don't recommend upgrading it because they're very, very, a lot of better when they are upgraded. And the, the haulers for bringing stuff back and forth. Then the other side of this is actually the attack side. Let's have a look at it. This is the first, very first level. The, um, the chain gunner. It is basically, as it says here, essentially a gun turret on tracks. Yes, that's what it does. You get you go down here and you shoot. Very nice. Yeah, and you can shoot your other stuff, but they'll get repaired. It's very good. I would say in the beginning, build a couple of these chain gunners and don't build any uh, any turrets. That's plenty to defend your base. Now let's get more crazy. This little flame tumbler is stupid fast. And that's both an advantage and a disadvantage because it'll either blow things up or it'll blow itself up. Uh, at least with me driving. I'm not good enough at driving this kind of thing. It looks cool, and it's a flame tumbler. So guess what weapon it has? What? It doesn't have a weapon. It doesn't have any ammo. There we go. 
Beautiful. But too, too nimble for my for my liking. It also doesn't have as much health. 500 health, while this uh, bad boy has 1,000 health and better resistance, impact resistance. Very nice. This is this big truck looking awesome as well. Has a big fat laser gun, and it pierces, so it'll actually not just hit a single target, but it'll go through. Very cool. They are more of the late game option when it comes to firing. So that was the vehicles. I will just illustrate uh, two of the items that belong in this as well. And those items are first the zone planner. This works like a normal construction planner or deconstruction planner. You drag something on, uh, on the map. However, there's this pop-up box that says, okay, so what kind of, uh, so do you want to say, do you want like uh, black X's? Do you want, uh, what's it called? Olive circles? What do you want? Anything your heart desires, you can place that here. And the purpose of it will be evident later, but it's important. You're going to use this a lot in, uh, yeah, well, it's great to have because you can mark things off. For example, say, this is the way I use it. I'm saying, okay, this is mining. You won't see it, but I'll mark all of these ones. I now have a black or blue X below it. You can see here. And I could, for example, say, no, I only want it below here. And I can use that for later on when I schedule the, the, uh, the vehicles to drive to locations. They can be uh, sent to different zones. So that's uh, the one part, the zone planner. The other one is most useful one. You get this for free in the beginning, a unit remote controller. Take a look at this. I make a select box. This is how you can play Command and Conquer. You shift, right click, and it goes there. Awesome, right? This is so cool. And it will not hit me. It'll derp around me, but it won't hit me. That's pretty cool. So what it's really beneficial for is just saying, hey, we have some here. Go this way. Yeah, uh, well, of course. Maybe get some fuel to get the going. And they're bumping into each other, so stay away from them. Because that bumping into each other is not actually hurting them. They self-heal, and now it's just my stupid robots that get uh, get damaged. But I guess that's because the flame tumbler just set everything ablaze. Let's, um, let's check something else out. I mean, if I click here, just in the middle of a forest... It'll try to path to that location, but it might have a difficult time because it, of course, what I would want it to do is go straight through, but it doesn't know that it can actually just plow way through. So it'll try and it'll get stuck and they'll bump into each other. And that's just part of this mod. They just bump into each other. And because it's using the beta, the beta AI, and there's nothing to do about that, but they will get the job done. It'll take a bit of time. For example, I'll say, well, you know, you can just take that instead. We can also use it on the hauler. Say, all right, let's get up here. Because then you can get up and fill up more inventory. I don't know if it actually has is completely full to the extent that it wants. Let's get up here. Come on, inventory transfer. Oops. You can see this miner has already made basically just a big square out of that. Okay, let's drive this way. And it will not transfer anything beyond that. See, this is also what happens. It gets stuck, it bumps, and then it'll try something else. Yep, great. Give it a train. Give it a little hauler. Good. Sometimes you need to help them. And then I will just show the last part is the two additional buildings that belong here in uh, this mod. I'm still having the, the hauler up here in my inventory, and I'm clicking in this direction. Now let's, we have the deploy, but let's start with the depot. The depot is a huge inventory. Basically what it can do, it takes an input here. It actually has two inputs. Very important to note. This input is the vehicle depot exchange data. This signifies what this depot will accept. And the other one is more of the, say sort of a standard one, where you can drag it in and watch it like, um, like it's a, a normal chest. So you can put conditions on. If the content of this depot is X, then do that. So if I drag this one and take it to the depot, it'll go over there. Nice. But nothing will happen. Yep, 
Nothing happens. That's fine. Uh, let's move it right away from it for a bit and move it over here. If I, for example, say, hey, you really want wood. You want like 20,000 of it. And you, oh, actually not wood, but let's take sapphire because that's, it's sapphire we have. You want 20,000 sapphire. Cool. Let's see what happens when I take my holder over the other depot. It will actually, boom, empty and go here. And that means it cannot be programmed either by certain conditions or by just clicking to go back to these locations, such as up here to fill up again. And of course, that's going to take a while just to do that manually. However, it is um, it is still quite an efficient way of, of transferring, but it's, it's very click intensive. Let's look in the meantime where our... Okay, these biters are a bit too close. I'm going to drag these home. I don't want to trigger biters in the middle of my tutorial. That would suck. Okay, we're going to wrap this up because now we have shown what the uh, what the vehicle, what kind of vehicles we have, both the logistics side, the uh, what's the, the army side, how it interacts with the de depot, the deployer. I'll save that for later because it won't make any sense at this point. We can also see this one has now been filled up again, and I can just mark it with the unit controller and it'll find its way eventually to that location. Okay, so this is the very first introduction. As we move on, we'll also look into the structures and how they interact. So thank you very much for joining, and I hope to see you in the next episode as we get more into the more advanced. So thank you. Bye.